When you're in the blockchain with a bulletproof, rock-solid, proof-of-stake consensus mechanism that doesn't spontaneously break down whenever it wants, doesn't destroy the environment, and offers ultra-high security assurances due to the properties of your functional programming language, it turns out that people actually want to collaborate with you. Ready? Let's go. We're going to discuss the Charles and Samsung USA rumors, Ledger's proposal before Catalyst to build out Ledger Live for Cardano, a new collaboration between two Cardano metaverses, and the coming launch of Jed, which apparently is just right around the corner. We're going to do one of my favorite things right now. We're going to engage in baseless speculation. Okay, that's not entirely true. We're going to look at a series of tweets that actually provide a slight basis for this speculation. Not a justification. It's still probably unjustified speculation, but there is a kernel of a basis for the speculation. So we saw Charles make this tweet. Notice his hair. That's going to come up in a second. Notice he has hair in this tweet. He says, CES, he's down in Vegas at the big Consumer Electronics Expo down there. And right below it, we saw Samsung US. Hope you have some fun this week. Very interesting. I We don't normally see gigantic global consumer electronics brands tweeting at Charles Hoskinson, at least not that we see. Not that uh, we as the public get to see. We don't see normal public tweets to Charles Hoskinson. And definitely not a mobile phone manufacturer that has a gigantic amount of market share the world over. You're probably aware, even though iPhones and iOS are very popular in the US and a lot of developed, very, very developed countries, Android is actually by far the global leader as far as mobile phone operating systems. And Samsung is a gigantic manufacturer of phones that end up running on something you know, you could, I'm, I'm sure the mobile phone aficionados right now are going crazy. They're like, it's not actually pure Android. There's a Samsung overlay on, you know, whatever. But Samsung has a gigantic share of the global cell phone market. And on those cell phones, Cardano could do interesting things. We all remember back in September when the big surprise partnership was Dish Network, which owns Boost Mobile. And there was a lot of talk of the possibility of getting a Cardano DAP store on Boost mobile phones. And that was gigantic because we're talking about a huge number of customers just with Boost mobile. And if we could get a DAP store on those phones, it would be a gigantic influx of new customers who are actually using blockchain DAPs, something we're not really used to in the blockchain space. I mean, we have a lot of people using blockchain stuff, but it's largely us crypto people. I don't hear, you know, normal mainstream people saying I, I'm dying to use this app, and it turns out to be, or this app, and it turns out to be a, a blockchain-based app. We're not there yet, but something like a big partnership with a gigantic company like Samsung that could produce that moment. Of course, this was a little ambiguous because we already knew that Samsung USA had partnered with Veritree, which runs on Cardano. So they're probably well aware of who Charles was. And it could be as simple as the person running the Samsung USA Twitter account, seeing that Charles mentioned he was at CES. And of course, they're going to have a booth there because they are definitely in the consumer electronics business. So it could be as simple as them recognizing him, his name and saying, have some fun this week. Charles, of course, not shy to communicate with anyone. He said, I will, especially since I got this amazing Node phone. Thank you for the message there, Blockchain AL, by the way. The mystery was only further fueled by Charles's post here at the Samsung booth and have a new look. Lo and behold, no hair. Of course, people immediately started making uh, comparisons to the Walter White transformation in Breaking Bad. But the funniest might have been Darth Ada with the Bane Photoshop here. Quite well done. 
Charles followed that up with a picture of himself seated on a throne of keyboards with this question, what is best in life? For those of you too young to have seen or remember Conan, the answer to this question is the interesting part. The answer is to crush your enemies, to see them driven before you, and to hear the lamentations of their women. This could just be a reference to the fact that he was seated on a throne. But the answer also implies that it's time to crush enemies. And I would say that Charles definitely has an enemy crushing haircut now. If I was going to go out and crush enemies and I was Charles Hoskinson, this would be my enemy crushing haircut. I know, I know. The ethos in Cardano is very much about collaboration. And even this episode on this channel is about collaboration. But come on. You got to admit, it wouldn't hurt us to do a tiny bit of crushing. Also probably relevant is this. Just coincidentally, today, Samsung launched their virtual store in the Decentraland metaverse. What if their experience in building out this virtual store was the same as everybody else who uses Ethereum? You are excited at the potential but then you suddenly realize the fees are ridiculous. What if what if Samsung has had that exact same experience that everybody else has? What if they did the same thing as everybody else? They turned around and they said, what comes next? What fixes this? What if the answer they came to was Cardano? Speaking of hardware manufacturers, Ledger has a Catalyst Fund 7 proposal. That proposal is to integrate Cardano into Ledger Live. This is interesting to me because uh, every, every single one of my friends that have gotten into Cardano, at some point, they decide to get an amount of Cardano that they would care about losing. And I always suggest to them that they should get a hardware wallet and they end up getting a Ledger and they're always very confused by the fact that there's no Ledger Live integration for Cardano. This comes up every single time and it's confusing to people and I think it worries them a little bit because they see every other coin they've ever heard of, but they don't see Cardano. So it looks like Ledger is asking for 75k to integrate Cardano into Ledger Live and I think they say it would take two months. They say duration two months, whatever that means, to hit their milestones. Um, I think I think there have been a, there's been some conversation about whether or not this proposal should be in the open source developer ecosystem challenge because Ledger is a centralized hardware manufacturer, so it doesn't necessarily make sense that it would fit under open source developer ecosystem. But despite whatever category it should fit in, I think this might be an important an important step for Cardano. It seems like I think we all know that. You can you can use uh, many Cardano ecosystem native wallets that work great with ledgers. I, th I think I, I've used multiple and they all work great with ledgers. But I think for a lot of beginners, this Ledger Live integration is probably probably something that seems pretty important. Even within the Cardano ecosystem, we're seeing a lot of collaborations going on right now. Here we have Ada Realm announcing collaboration talks with Pandaverse. I think the metaverse collaborations are kind of interesting because we had uh, Pavia sort of right off the bat introduce this idea of portals. They were saying, hey, we don't know if we're going to be able to pull this off, but we own a parcel in Decentraland, I believe. And they said if they can, they're going to try to get portals to Decentraland and Sandbox or something like that. I thought this was a really interesting idea, and I definitely applauded them actually having a plot in Decentraland. And I'm curious to see what kinds of collaborations we actually get in the Cardano ecosystem, because I think it's one thing to have a portal. Ada Realm also has a portal, uh, I believe it's on the volcano on the map, that goes to the uh, the Gloose parcels. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but I think it's Gloose, Gloose parcels. Um, I'm curious to see if we just see these sort of portal things. So I'm not sure how these are going to work exactly, but I have clicked on the portal in Ada Realm that leads to the Gloos universe or whatever it is. <laughs> and it's kind of interesting. So I, I can see, I can imagine, you know, going into one of the Cardinal metaverses, clicking on a portal or walking into a portal, however it's going to work. And, you know, maybe a new screen pops up and you find yourself in the other metaverse. 
I almost think it would be more interesting. I'm almost more interested in the potential for collaborations where maybe avatars from one metaverse would be transportable into another metaverse. You know, maybe maybe some people would prefer that you you uh, leave one metaverse and you pop up in the other with your avatar that corresponds to that metaverse. But I think it would almost be more interesting if you could have universal avatars and visit these different metaverses that have collaborations. I also wonder how big a difference is going to make between these sort of portal type collaborations where you click or you walk into it or however it works and you're sort of, you know, a new screen opens up or something and now you're looking at the interface of that other metaverse. I wonder if we'll get to the point where we'll also have collaborations where the other metaverse will actually show up on the map of the first metaverse and vice versa. Could any of these metaverses actually get so tight with each other that they decide, hey, we're just going to show the other metaverse right on our map. And you could even just walk to the other metaverse across, you know, like a, a bridge represented on the map, like an actual bridge that you could walk across or something like that. I'm really curious to see how this all works out. Maybe five years from now, you know, if, if we really have this like hardcore interoperability and you can seamlessly back and forth and these kind of things happen, or if these partnerships are more just like the click and a new window opens up kind of thing. I should point out that it sounds like Ada Realm is actually doing something like that with, uh, I believe, a separate landmass for the former Danoverse project parcel holders. We also have some news about one of the most hotly anticipated collaborations in the entire Cardano universe. Everybody remembers at the Cardano Summit, one of the big announcements was that the Jed stablecoin would be issued by Koti. And this made sense because we were all familiar already with Koti and its CEO, Shahaf Bar Geffen. We knew that IOHK and Cardano and Koti were close, had a very good working relationship, and that Charles was an admirer of the Koti team. So this all made perfect sense. The big question, though, was when Jed, because at the time we also knew that the Cardano DeFi ecosystem was coming very soon. In fact, at the time in September, we hoped before the end of the year, and we did get Muesli Swap. We did get Muesli Swap, so I guess you could argue the Cardano DeFi ecosystem was born in 2021. But we knew that having a native stablecoin would be very useful for that Cardano DeFi ecosystem. This interview with Shahaf Bar Geffen was dropped today by Crypto Coins Coach. And during the interview, he starts talking about the things that Koti is doing with Cardano. And of course, the subject of Jed came up. And he said, Jed is right around the corner. The launch of Jed will be right around the corner. And then later on, he comes back and he even clarifies further Q1. This sounds great. Of course, the old maxim, whatever your worst case scenario is for software launch, double that. So I won't hold them to Q1, but it sounds like we're going to get Jed very, very soon. This is going to be very interesting. I mean, this is an extremely advanced algorithmic stable coin. If you're interested in how Jed actually works, there's a link down below in the description box to a video I did back in June about how that Tricoin system actually operates, at least an early implementation of it. I love the way this system works. I'm really excited to see it in action. I hope you're excited too and that you're gearing up for a great weekend. I will talk to you soon.